After two months of not hearing much from AMD, last week we had Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 launch. This week we've got Vcash launch and about five or six other brand new CPUs we weren't expecting to see. These are aimed more at consumers, but you know what else a consumer might want? Here's today's sponsor. Well shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per dollar than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60 day credit at linode.com slash techdeckpotato. What's your minimum specification? So today, AMD is technically having what they're calling their spring update. So March, spring, yeah, okay, that kind of works out. Uh, what makes this update different to previous spring updates is a bit weird. AMD didn't have press briefings. We got sent a three-minute video, a few slides, and then got told, ask questions over email. Fair enough, most of this is self-explanatory, but there are three segments to AMD's spring update. The first one, which you already know, is the Vcache stacked processor, the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. This is an 8-core chip with a base frequency of 3.4 GHz, turbo frequency of 4.5 GHz, but the key aspect here is the extra Vcache. Instead of having 32 MB of L3 cache for an 8-core CPU, we now have 96 MB of L3 cache. That means if there is any memory access in that sort of 32 to 96 megabyte region from any of the cores on this chiplet, the chip will not have to go out to main memory to get that data. It should already be prefetched inside the L3 if we have an L3 hit. Therefore, workloads that are very L3 cache heavy will get a benefit from this. AMD is calling this the world's fastest gaming CPU. And on the back slide that they sent us, uh, it says some games that they tested on versus the 12900K with uh, DDR5. So AMD, even with DDR4 and uh, Zen 3 architecture, they're saying that their processor here, even with a turbo frequency of 4.5 versus the 5.2 of the 12900K, is still going to be the world's fastest gaming CPU. Now, AMD didn't provide numbers. Uh, we have to go back through previous presentations for those. Or we wait for reviews, which is coincidentally coming out on 420 or April 20th. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some sort of jiggery pokery going on to go for that date. However, price wise, $449. Uh, that's exactly the same price as the Ryzen 7 5800X. I was under the impression that it would have to be at least $550 in order for AMD, AMD to get the same margins because this extra Vcash chiplet is another 7 nanometer chiplet on top. We're going f adding another 36 to 42 square millimeters on top of the 82 square millimeter chiplet. So that's another 50% 7 nanometer silicon there, which should mean another 50% cost for the 7 nanometer silicon in top. And then if AMD wants the same margins, it should be high priced. But no, AMD may actually be saying we're okay with lower margin on this part because it becomes more competitive and uh, more competitive essentially against uh, Intel's Old Lake, which is really what it's going up against. And Old Lake has kind of attacked AMD's uh, price performance, uh, its traditional you know, home inside the enthusiast. So this is coming out, like I said, April 20th. Uh, Going to see if we get a sample in, see how it tests. Stay tuned for the gaming benchmarks that a lot of uh, your favorite reviewers will produce. I'm more interested in sort of the workload testing, because in the past we've seen workload testing not really benefit from extra uh, L3 cache, or at least consumer workloads. Enterprise workloads, sure, that's why Milan X will exist. Uh, but in terms of day-to-day -day use for most users, I'm not, I'm, I believe we're not going to see much, or if anything, maybe a 2-3% to increase in performance there. Um, but let's get, the, let's get the chip in, let's see the numbers, and let's see what's going on. Now, alongside that, AMD is also launching three more brand new Zen 3 processors. Uh, let's put the uh, list up on the screen. We've got the Ryzen 7 5700X, Ryzen 5 5600, and the Ryzen 5 5500. So an X, two non-Xs. We're filling out more of that portfolio uh, for Ryzen 5000 for Zen 3. 
standard cache arrangements. These are all 65 watt processors, you know, 299 for the Ryzen 7 all the way down to 159 for the Ryzen 5. Basically, what AMD is saying here is we're filling out the stack with more price conscious parts. Or are these are uh, PCI 4, no integrated graphics. And yeah, they just fill in the stack. And it'll be interesting to see how many of these make it to shelves in decent quantity because this is obviously eating into again to amd's uh seven nanometer budget um there is a suggestion that maybe the ryzen 5 might be the integrated chiplet version though i'm waiting to hear officially from amd on that looking at the specifications actually that ryzen 5 5500 six cores 12 threads the cache structure and the frequency structure seem to suggest is actually based on the apu silicon uh, but with actually the GPU disabled, in which case my graph here that says PCIe 4 should go down to PCIe 3, because that's the only uh, PCIe that that chiplet supports. I'm waiting back for a, an answer from AMD on that, but that would be interesting to see exactly where it fits in um, with all the other APUs and non-APUs. Ian from the future here, we've just got a word from AMD that the Ryzen 5 5500 is indeed the APU but with the graphics disabled. Now, alongside Zen 3-based Ryzen 5000 is launching Zen 2-based Ryzen 4000 CPUs for desktop, for AM4. Now, this one is a little bit weird. So here on this graph, we've got all the Ryzen 4000 CPUs that aren't the Pro CPUs. So we actually had six APUs that were a part of this family before. Um, none of them came to retail. You could buy some of them if you went to, say, AliExpress or looked on the grey market. But the idea was that they were all OEM, all Zen 2 plus Vega. What AMD is doing here is adding three or adding two new SKUs to that list. The Ryzen 3 4100 with four cores, the Ryzen 5 4500 with six cores. And then they're making the Ryzen 5 4600G available at retail for $154. So this is coming in the sort of the mid-range APU level with Zen 2. And obviously you've got the separated L3 cache, all TP of all these CPUs is 65 watts. And again, AMD's filling out the lower end, uh, $129 for the Ryzen 5, $99 for the Ryzen 3. Again, question I put to AMD is, what is the reason for launching these? Are you merely just filling out the lower end of the stack here? If so... I thought all your 7 nanometer silicon was going towards the high um, cost epics. Now it's great that AMD's filling out this side of the stack. <sighs> Doesn't entirely... I, I want to understand from a business sense why AMD is doing this. And on top of all this, I also did a price comparison chart, which you can see here. Um, I haven't put all the CPUs on here. I've literally taken all the AMD CPUs that have just been announced today and put the nearest Intel CPUs by price. Uh, and instead of the power consumption here, instead of the rated TDP of each chip, I've put the turbo power for each chip, just to try and make it more even. So at the top here, the Ryzen 7 1500X3D, $449. Nearest chip is actually a 12900F, which is this 8 plus 8 core, 24 thread, higher turbo frequency, less L3 cache, but higher turbo. Back when AMD is saying this is the world's fastest gaming chip, this is essentially what we're talking about. We're talking about the L3 cache competing against the raw clock frequency. The higher frequency you have, the more things you can pull out of cache and send commands to the GPU, whereas um, with more L3 cache, you can essentially preempt more and make sure you're sending the right data. And it's obviously the trade-off between the two. And we expect the Ryzen 7 to be um, lower power than the Core i9 at turbo, However, there has been some talk about whether the Ryzen 7 is overclockable or not. Uh, last we heard is that it will be overclockable. So it'll be interesting to see the dynamic between the two. And also to note here, the old Lake chip has PCI 5, whereas the Ryzen chip only has PCI 4. That's going to be true through all of these. So keep that in mind. The new Ryzen 7 5700X gets sandwiched between the Core i7-12700F and the Core i5-12600K, whether you want to compete against 20 threads or 16 threads. Uh, both the Intel chips have less cache, uh, much higher power, 
But as we've seen, those P cores connected with the E cores in Old Lake do give a lot of performance. Go down to the Ryzen 5 5600 and our two competing chips are the Core i5-12500 and the Core i5-12400F. Now the 12500 has onboard GPU. They're all about the same frequency. AMD has more L3 cache. But again, we've got Zen 3 competing against uh, Old Lake P cores. And those Old Lake P cores do have the IPC advantage. So do you want to trade off IPC for extra power? It might be worth it in that case. That's kind of the segment where Intel's pricing really kills it. So, And then going below that, we've got the Ryzen 5 5500, which is a 6-core 12-thread Zen 3. And the Ryzen 5 4600G, which is also 6 cores, 12 threads, but Zen 2. Only $5 cheaper, so roughly the same price. You give up Zen 3 for Zen 2, but you gain those Vega 7 uh, integrated graphics. That's the benefit there. But then you've also got competing against price. You've got the Ryzen, uh, sorry, you've got the Core i5-12400F and the Core i3-12300 offering slightly more frequency. Uh, between the two, you're now getting roughly equal on L3 cache um, and uh, roughly equal on power as well. So that's an interesting dynamic. Then as we slowly get into the Zen 2 processors, AMD's benefits kind of tail off here because they're now equal with Intel's on power, on frequency, but Intel has that sort of P-core IPC advantage. Regardless of the price, and then we're now because we're also dealing with Zen 2 based CPUs, uh, PCIe versus uh, Old Lake, Old Lake is PCIe 5. Um, a lot of Old Lake options here have integrated graphics as well. And the cache, Old Lake starts winning on the cache front. So out of all these processors, really AMD is better competing in the mid and high end. I'm not entirely sure that the low end parts really fill a hole. It provides competition in that market space. All of these CPUs, except for the Ryzen 7 1500X 3D, should be coming to market either today or very shortly. Today's the announcement. AMD didn't really give a clear indication when it's coming on shelves, though we're starting to see leaks from retailers that they're definitely being prepared for them. So AMD's spring update third announcement is an interesting one. It's all to do with motherboards. So AMD's whole thing with the AM4 socket is that you could buy first gen and multiple generations of processors after that would be supported. So if you bought a X370 motherboard, you can have Ryzen 1000, Ryzen 2000, Ryzen 3000, Ryzen 4000, Ryzen 5000. That was always the dream, but that hasn't been the dream. AMD has kept, because of limitations with BIOSes and support and power and all sorts of other stuff, it hasn't been that easy to enable the latest CPUs on the oldest AM4 motherboards. It's been difficult, and AMD says they're now in the process of actually getting that done. They say work has been, uh, it's been in the works for several months already. Uh, we've already seen ASRock kind of tease this by supporting Ryzen 5000 on their 300 series uh, AM4 motherboards. But the idea is that AMD's Agiza 1207, that's the key number, 1207, will slowly be rolling out between April, May, June, depending on your motherboard manufacturer, depending on your motherboard version, whether it's still supported, whether depending whether it's EOL or it's still sold. The idea is that AMD has made this BIOS update, this Agiza package available to motherboard manufacturers, and then they can offer selective BIOSes with Ryzen 5000 support. I mean, this is a slide that they gave to us. And A320 still has a limit when it comes to Ryzen 3000 for some reason. However, now we have, you can have an X370 motherboard, especially if you've got one of the premium ones. A BIOS, beta BIOS update should be coming soon to help support Ryzen 3000, Ryzen 4000, and Ryzen 5000. Um, it's worth noting here that in this diagram that AMD showed, it doesn't say Ryzen 4000 APUs, doesn't say Ryzen 5000 APUs. This is kind of more a CPU only play right now and it's good that they're supporting this one of the reasons why it's been so difficult to bring around support for all this probably is because when amd first launched zen don't forget amd was in that nadir of their product usefulness availability 
coming to market, being able to execute on every single point. Back then, they still outsourced as media for the chipset. So in this instance, AMD weren't able to plan sufficiently ahead and put everything in place for full support from day one. We're hoping as AMD moves to AM5 and the promise of multi-generational support is still going to be part of that platform, that AMD can put in minimum specifications for those platforms to able to support future generations of Zen 4, Zen 5, Zen 6, and depending on where we go on from there. Back when Ryzen 1000 series was launched, while AMD had signed a ring-fenced money for the R&D for Zen, it did it at the expense of all else, and this is perhaps one of the things that kind of fell down there. So it's good that AMD's putting the work towards this. It's a shame it's come so late, but it is what it is. Fingers crossed AM5 is better supported long term, but it's definitely the right thing to do. Overall, I'll go back to what I said in the beginning. It's a bit weird AMD kind of launched these with only a three minute refresh video, not a briefing, just a small amount of slides. Normally they would bring out an executive or an engineer to go through what's new, especially go over the vCache again. That didn't happen this time, whether that's just timing down to AMD, people availability, not 100% sure. Though, exactly how AMD is going to fill the shelves with these Zen 2 and Zen 3 parts with 7 nanometer silicon at a time when they say that you know they're selling their best CPUs hand over fist, especially in enterprise, I'm surprised the allocation hasn't gone over there. Now, some of you will come across to me and say, Ian, this is binning. Some of those CPUs didn't hit those high targets, so they're now selling them as lower off SKUs. I'd agree with you, but they would have had those binning issues or proportions from day one. We're now, what, over a year since Zen 3 launch, multiple years since Zen 2 launch, so why are they only coming out now? Maybe they've built a stockpile, maybe it's volume, maybe it's supply chain issues. Some of these processes needed components in the supply chain that weren't freely available, that AMD couldn't commit to producing volume, and now they can. Interesting twist. Interesting twist indeed. Regardless, hopefully these CPUs will be supported longer term. If we remember the Ryzen 3 3300X and the Ryzen 3 3100, they were kind of like flash in a pan, hard to get off initially, and then kind of disappeared in a lot of markets. I'm hoping that AMD is able to support these longer term going forward. But we're all waiting for Zen 4, obviously, coming out later this year. I want to be there. Will you? If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it will instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month. And it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.